Welcome back, everybody. Your two favorite movie reviewers are back here for Cinefellas.com. That's right. I'm talking about Uncle Logan Myers over there and me, myself, Henry Hill. And we are more than thrilled to be talking about this movie uh, today with you. Uh, that is A Quiet Place 2. And the theater movie going experience is back, my friend. How excited were you to step into the theater to smell all the smell of the popcorn, to have your feet stick to the floor? And God knows what else is all over the seats when you sit in them. But how, how was the overall experience for you, man? I had a great time. It was awesome to be back. They're watching us. I want to say that I really had a great time. <laughs> no, it felt great to be back. This is the first movie I've seen in the theater in over 15 months. The longest of my entire life I haven't been to the movies. And what a movie to kick it off, seeing this in the big screen, the music you know, the sound design, the cinematography, the directing, it was just a phenomenal, really great sequel follow-up. I, I didn't watch many trailers for this movie, went in with fresh eyes, and I had an absolute blast with this movie, and the theater experience was amazing. Shout out to AMC for keeping a clean and safe environment for the first time returning after being uh, vaccinated and had a great time. Wasn't many people in the theater, maybe 10, 15 people, not really sitting too close to us, but uh, this is a movie that just really drew me in and never let me go. I had a great time with it. You know, you get to the point pretty quick in the film and had an absolute blast with the sequel. The perfect movie to get everybody back in theaters. It's one that you're going to want to see in a theater with other people just so you can hear the other gasps and, you know, in the crowd. It's really tense. And right in the beginning scene, we get a flashback to events before, before old uh, Uncle John Krasinski there was, uh, you know, obviously killed in the first one. Um, we get to see a little backstory here, and uh, it, man, that scene hit me hard, dude. I was on the edge of my seat, like, holy shit. You can tell that they upped the budget in this, and they spent more, because the first one, if you remember, we got some glimpses of the creatures, but it was yeah. a lot less than in this movie. We got to see a lot of them, and uh, I loved how they set up that whole thing with, uh, it felt like a real small town, like, you know, not too far, you know, not too, you know, out of the vein of, you um, what town we grew up in Rochelle it felt like every day uh, down you know right downtown felt like you were there in a small town with them at the baseball park yep uh, you know like us we spent a lot of days in the summer there in our youths uh, growing up playing baseball and that's where this movie starts up right at the at the ballpark and we get a little glimpse of maybe how these creatures uh, got got here on earth and set up uh, you know the events that ended up happening in the first one and leading into this part two. Yeah, that was always the question for me is like, how did this all start? And they don't waste any time in the second movie, like five minutes in, just like, boom, get right to the point. This is a town of Millbrook, like you were saying, very small town, rural town. Everybody knows each other. You have the mom and pop shops. And you see John Krasinski early in the film playing Lee Abbott, uh, getting ready to go to the baseball game. It's kids playing, so it goes and gets some like fruit at the local grocery store. And it's, you know, like these long shots of like mm -hmm. following him around. Um, going to this baseball game and that's when shit hits the fan you see the alien spider-like monsters just start attacking and that's that's crazy just the way they go into that super intense super suspenseful right out of the gates five minutes into the movie you're on the edge of your seat it never lets you go it never lets up from there it's a very short movie it clocks in around the same time i believe as the first movie it's a little little less than an hour and a half i believe uh, but really there aren't any parts that drag there's a few scenes that obviously set up the relationship between Emmett, who we move in, uh, meet in this movie, who is um, the John Krasinski's character from the first one's brother. So they, uh, in the opening shot there in the flashback scene, we, we get introduced to him. He's at the ballpark along with Evelyn and the kids watching Marcus play baseball there when uh, shit starts to go down. So we know that they're a family. We didn't know by any of the trailers or anything like that who Emmett was. We didn't know if he was just going to be uh, you know, a random guy that they came across, but he, we do find out early who he is. And I really enjoyed how they set up his character uh, just by what we've seen. You know, it would make you guess that he's probably going to be the bad guy, but they don't play it like that. It's a very nuanced character. And I was happy that uh, Krasinski brought him on board and Killian Murphy's a great actor. So I, I thought he did a really good job just doing all the nuance of the role because it's very, it's a very uh, rich backstory with him having a family of his own and Throughout the film, we see what happens to him and why he makes the choices he makes. Um, and yeah, it, 
I, I love Killian Murphy in the role. That was an excellent choice by John to cast him. And I heard that John uh, binged Peaky Blinders and sort of saw <laughs> him on Peaky Blinders and wanted to bring him on board in this role. So that's pretty Tommy cool. Tommy fucking Shelby, Peaky fucking <laughs> Blinders, boys. Hey, I love Killian Murphy. Everything he touches, he's just really great. Underrated actor. I don't think enough people talk about this actor, but I love this character's Emmett, you know, playing the... Uh, the brother to Lee's character and what happens to him, the aftermath of this attack by these monsters, basically loses his family, doesn't have much. He's in hiding in this old factory. And then that sets up, you know, Emily Blunt's character and the kids, you know, trying to survive and make their way, find him. And it sets some really great scenes with more of the monsters attacking. They're trying to get away and survive, you know, get through the night, get through the day and trying to figure out, you know, what's the next step? Where do they go from here? Um, but Killian Murphy really played a great character of Emmett. I loved his character, how they introduced him at the ball game, and he went through a lot of shit early on, you know, after this takes place, losing his family, and we find out what happened to his wife, which is a really eerie scene in the factory, um, but I thought he played really great with, you know, Emily Blunt's character and the kids. You could tell that he's watching out for them and helping them to survive. Everybody here is on their A game. Emily Blunt, again, brings it to this role. She's so believable. Uh, yeah. It feels very natural and obviously working with her husband here directing this time only, uh, you know, she's, she gives a powerhouse performance as good as any of her other performances uh, and the kids, they're great too. You know, sometimes kid actors can be a little so, so, but these kids are, did just knock it out of the park. You believe them, you know, from the first shot to the last shot of the movie and they, the family in this one deals with a lot of uh, trauma again, like the first one. Obviously, they have to move on from the events that happened in the first one, and they hit the road in search and uh, in, in search and hopes to find Emmett here. And uh, when we do, when we do finally see the family meet up with Emmett, it doesn't uh, go without uh, some severe, gruesome injury. We'll say that with a yes. uh, with a trap that was set, um, and that sure, <laughs> that scene had me like, oh my god, I was like clenching my teeth. Down. I, it was, I did the same thing that that scene. Yeah. I was like, ah. Like, I can't do that. Like, traps like that or like bones are breaking. Yeah, bones, like, yeah. I was like, mm, I was eating popcorn. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> put it back in the bucket. Yeah. yeah. There's some really brutal scenes of what this family's going through. And you really feel for them. You feel like you're in this world, especially in the theater. Uh, just the use of the surround sound. You're like, you feel like you're part of the family and you feel what they're going through and hoping they make it out alive. Uh, but the kids are really great. Uh, Mark is played by uh, Noah Jupe, and then you had Millicent Simmons playing Regan, which is the deaf daughter. She looks like Dustin from Stranger Things. Uh, yeah, that, reminds really, me of that a lot. Really great kid actors. They're going to blow up. I can see their careers moving forward, some really big projects, but they're really convincing. Not annoying at all, but you can see the dynamic between the brother and sister and the young baby and, you know, the mom played by Emily Blunt. You know, they had this really great dynamic as a family. And they know how to use sign language, obviously being their daughter being deaf. So they use that. There's not a lot of dialogue in the film, like the first film. And then, you know, communicating with sign language, but you really feel for them. I loved where the story went in this. It wasn't just linear. It wasn't just let's hit the road and see who we run into. We have interactions where they, you know, they're carrying, Evelyn has a, a baby that she's caring for. So obviously you can't keep a baby quiet. There's going to be some noise made which sets up some really awesome, just really claustrophobic scenes. Like there's a, there's a scene on an uh, abandoned train with uh, Regan and uh, you know, she, she makes some noise. And as soon as the monsters come, it's a, it was a terrifying scene. You really feel like they're everywhere. Like if you make one bad move and make noise, they're going to be right there on you. So it's, it's, it's crazy. And they're all barefoot. It feels very real. Like they, they don't have anything in this world. They're all barely surviving um, and when they come across Emmett, that comes up, you know, because there's only so much food for survival. And then if you start taking on people from this world, who knows how many there'll be supplies are already limited. And yep. then that's going to mean that you're not going to survive as long. So you kind of deal with people not trusting each other, the people that we see other than uh, Evelyn and her family and Emmett, obviously. And we do, uh, you know, figure out what's going on from here. We get some really cool scenes where they have to get over to this island basically um i don't want to spoil too much with it but uh it's a very cool scene about uh how they get over how they manage to get over there and these people that they run into at the marina there um and how weird they were and they didn't explain about the characters but uh 
they were like covered in blood and had bloodshot eyes. Like, I don't know if they were infected with something or it looked like going a, yeah. crazy. Yeah. But uh, that whole scene had me on the edge of my seat too. That whole yeah sequence there. I like how they dived at, uh, more the arcs of like other characters, like more backstories and what they're going through and also introducing other people, survivors of what takes place with these monster alien, alien like creatures. Uh, what you're talking about, they reminded me of like pirates from Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't know the way they looked. They like been hanging out in the ocean too long. <laughs> it looked like they're half dead to like a zombie, but that was cool the introduction to them without, you know, giving too much away. And then also having to do with this island, we, we're seeing more survivors and characters in this world, and they're going to expand upon that. Um, but I, I like the introduction of a lot of those characters, and you can't hide from these creatures as we find out in the film. You think you're in a safe place, but just one little sound will set everything off and they'll be dead. So I like how they really expanded the universe, bringing in more characters of, you know, people living in New York where this, you know, takes place. It felt like a continuation of the the first movie, but I think it uh, delved in farther to some backstory, obviously, with the flashback and then mm -hmm. meeting these other people. You kind of get a sense of where the world's at, not just from the perspective of Evelyn and the kids, but from the outside world, like what's going on out there? Like how are other people getting through this? And uh, it's, yeah, I thought they did. Krasinski did a really good job directing and writing this film. I liked how he kept it tight. It didn't feel totally different from the first one. It, it really felt like just a continuation and how the family would deal with his death from the first movie and move on. Uh, having some knowledge of what, you know, how they can kind of fight these aliens. They know that they don't like the high pitched sounds uh, mm -hmm. and frequencies. So they're going to, they're going to try to use that to their advantage um, we get some awesome scenes with them, you know, fighting off the aliens too. Uh, Emily Blunt with a shotgun. We get some some badass scenes with that. We see some pretty cool, clever ways uh, of them killing uh, some of the aliens that are coming after them. We get some really awesome blood and guts, uh, uh, a lot of gore that uh, was made me like, yes, I want to see more of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love the gore used and that it's not just all in your face. It's always a suspenseful scene that leads up to something gory too. The chase scenes, it, it all felt very suspenseful and it paid off in the end. Yeah. It's like they're running out of time. Time is of the essence. They're getting from one point to the next or point A to point B and they have to survive. This is a game of survival taking, you know, trying to fend off these alien like creatures and it really uh, ups the ante, you know, the stakes are higher in this film and you're not, really sure if they're going to survive. And I thought it was just a really great sequel. I didn't know what to expect. I watched one trailer, went in with pretty much fresh eyes. I knew this was a film I wanted to see at the theater. The first film returning to the theaters because I saw the first film on opening night three years ago in 2018. So I was really excited for it. One of the most anticipated films of the year. Krasinski did not disappoint at all. I think this is just higher budget. You can tell just the directing camera work. Um, the gore, the CGI, they they really uh, polished the sequel. It looked really great. It looked beautiful. CGI looked phenomenal. I wish, uh, you know, the DC movies can take some notes here, how to make uh, good CGI. Yeah. The creatures look realistic and, you know, pretty terrifying. And, you know, all across the board, you know, with Killian Murphy's character playing Emmett and the kids and, you know, Emily Blunt's character, they all worked well together. And it's definitely a movie you have to see in the theater just to experience everything and feel like you're in this film and going through everything the family is. It really does. It feels like you're right there with them, the way it's shot and everything. You're on the edge of your seat. You know that you can't make yep. a sound. kind of makes you hold your breath throughout the film because they get in some really harrowing situations where you don't know if they're going to survive. You get some really gnarly scenes uh, with the family going through some traumas. Um, and I really, I really love the addition of Emmett. I played by Killian Murphy, obviously. I thought he did a great job in the role. And I liked how his character was written. It wasn't just, it, you know, you could guess just going in, like I said, that uh, he was going to be the bad guy. You, you, yeah. know, you, you weren't going to be able to trust him. But uh, I, I loved how he was written and had a, a big arc throughout the film. You didn't know where, how it was going to end up. And even how it ended, it kind of, you're kind of like, okay, well, maybe he's not all one way or the other. It was kind of, he was kind of uh, morally in the middle, we'll say. Um, I can't wait to see what they where it goes from here because it does set up things for an, 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 another sequel. Obviously, we get some loose ends in the end there. We don't know exactly where everybody's at, um, but uh, I imagine we will see another one. I know that we're going to see a uh, prequel or a spinoff 
in this universe. I think that was announced uh, a while back there. So we're gonna we're gonna see some more stories in this world, and I'm sure we're gonna see a third one. I mean, with Emily yeah. Blunt still alive, yeah, trilogy. Kids, so yeah, yeah. So, I think the overall initiative or goal was to make it a trilogy. I think that's what Krasinski was saying. So they set it up, you know, obviously for another film. So I'm excited for that. Um, all across the board, I thought it was pretty great, but it did end abruptly. Like I was like really into it, wanting more, and mm -hmm. just like kind of ends like shit. Um, but that was really my only minor complaint about the film, but they're really setting it up and expanding the universe for the you know third film and seeing where this all ends. Uh, but I'll give it up to the, the writers as well, Krasinski, and then you had uh, Scott Beck, Brian Woods returning. I interviewed them a few years ago about their film Haunt, really fantastic horror movie that's on Shudder if you guys are interested in seeing their directorial work. Uh, but they're great writers. They wrote the first film, and Krasinski, really cool guys from Iowa where I used to live. And uh, I got to give it up to them. I, mean, I thought the script is really great in this too. And the narrative and the arcs of these characters introducing on that too. I thought the writing was really great and polished. This is one of the, the better sequels that you'll see. They did everything yeah. right, in my opinion. You know, yeah, you mentioned how it does. It, it does end abruptly, kind of like you're hoping to see where it goes from there. And then he just ends it instead, which takes balls. You know, more people would want to see something very, you know, concrete, conclusive to end the film, but it's kind of left open and that's fine because I know that means there's going to be another whole movie coming. So I'm okay with that. Um, I thought it was a great sequel. It didn't try to do way too much like other sequels do and then just fail miserably. It kept to the same kind of pace. It upped the ante, it upped the budget and the CGI looked good. They didn't try to rush it or make it too over the top. Everything looked good. It didn't look outlandish when the CGI was used. Um, it was very su suspenseful. I loved it from the opening scene. I loved that whole thing, the whole scene with the bus and Emily Blunt driving the truck. I thought that was really awesome. And I mean, I was like into it totally. I was like, holy. <laughs> I just put myself in that situation, kind of world, were the world's kind of situation there. I loved how yep. they did that whole opening scene, which was an obviously... Obviously a nod to War of the Worlds there, that opening scene. Very cool. I had an excellent time with this. This was the best movie to, to go back to the theaters. I've, I've been to the theaters a few times before, but this one really feels like this is the, the start of people going back to the theaters. And I'm, I'm so happy to finally get past that part of the pandemic where we can't all go enjoy these movies, not just a select few at smaller theaters or smaller towns and stuff. It's nice that uh, the box office is back. This killed it this weekend. So it pretty much guarantees we're going to get another one. And this movie will be premiering on Paramount Plus in about 40, Five days. two days now. Yeah, uh, no, 42 days now. Right. From Friday. So it won't be long and it'll be, we'll be able to watch it again uh, at home on our screens. But this is the film that you need to go see in theaters. Go see this. Uh, take your Take your significant other or your buddies and go have a great time. You're going to be on the edge of your seats throughout. Uh, I loved everything. I loved Emmett. Killian Murphy killed it. Loved it. Loved everything. Awesome movie. And for me, I'm going to give a quiet place to a 4.5 out of five John Krasinski hair pieces. I have to agree with everything you're saying, you know, with our review. Sometimes we agree or disagree, but I, this is a movie to return to the theaters. Things are starting to calm down a bit, get back to normal throughout the, the U.S. here, especially Illinois. Uh, so this is a movie you definitely have to check out in the theater to feel the full suspense, edge of your seat, you know, drama that we have with A Quiet Place too. Doesn't waste any time, five minutes, the opening, you get a backstory, and then the rest of the movie is them surviving, uh, you know, really showing this new character of Emmett and other characters and people surviving and what they come across in the film. And, like I said, Survival, the aliens looked phenomenal. All of the writing, directing, cinematography is really great. Sound design, really great stuff in this film. I, I guess I kind of went in with low expectations, only watched one trailer, but it's definitely one of the better sequels out there and one of the better films of the year as well. That being said, I'll give A Quiet Place Part 2 a four and a half out of five. Killian Murphy hair pieces. Let us know, did you guys make it out to the theaters to check out A Quiet Place 2 this weekend? Are you watching this review to see if you agreed with us, to see uh, if you know we're stupid and we thought this was great, but really it was a piece of garbage? But we had a great time. We hope you guys too go see this movie. It's worth it. You know, uh, Go to the theater, get the popcorn, have the whole experience. It's going to make you feel good, make you feel... Uh, like you're, you know, past all the pandemic stuff, we can go out now and do the things that we love again, go to the theaters again. 
this feels good. It's a nice trip back. Um, I'm glad you got to go too, mate. And I'm glad we both loved it, but it sounds like we loved it equally as much, uh, which doesn't surprise me. We have uh, similar tastes, especially in horror movies, I'd say. So uh, I figured you'd love this, but it's hard. It's hard not to. It's just directed really well. And every, everybody does a great performance. It was even nice to see who show up there at the end. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is really the kickoff of the summer blockbuster. Obviously, it's Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you guys are all having a safe and enjoyable weekend, relaxing weekend. This is a movie to go check out in the theaters if you're looking for something to do. You know, spend the six bucks, go see it at a matinee. It's definitely worth it. Or if you want to see it on like IMAX or whatever, it's like 15 bucks. It's worth the ticket price. And it's definitely one of, one of the better films. It really kicks off the summer blockbuster season. Uh, we got Fast and the Furious that came out this weekend. I'm sure it's shit, but uh, we have- One upcoming, last ride. One last time with Uncle Ben. <laughs> and we got The Conjuring 3 coming out next week. And um, we have Black Widow coming out in July. It's a lot of great films. I'm, I'm going to be returning to the theater to check out. And also lots of great reviews coming right here on our YouTube channel and website, cinefellas.com, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Lots it's going to be a busy summer, boys. It's going to be a busy summer. We're going to be talking about Cruella that just actually premiered this past weekend as well. Another great film, a live action film from Disney and more reviews, podcasts and interviews coming as well. So stay tuned. We got a lot of great movies and shows to review and we can't wait to get together and review the upcoming uh, Conjuring 3. We'll probably be doing that over the next weekend here. Yep. So uh, stay tuned to this channel for that that review and other great reviews to come, podcasts, all that fun stuff, the fellas giveaways. There's more to come. The summer season, movie season is on now, and uh, you'll be seeing a lot from us moving forward. So this is your two favorite monsters over there. What's your name? My name is Henry Hill, and mm-hmm. your name is? My name is Logan Blunt. <laughs> until the next, until the next movie review. Oh, can you help me squeeze these strawberries? <laughs> the f- only the freshest of fruits. <laughs>